Hi everyone, happy Friday. Happy Friday. So we're just gonna, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the past couple projects that we did just because I see some, some regulars that have been coming and that'll give just a few more minutes in case anybody's gonna show up. So who remembers some of the other artists we did so far during our, our series? Just yell them out. You don't even have to raise your hand. Just unmute yourself and yell it. Henry Matisse. Henry Matisse. What was Matisse's artwork like? Do you remember what we did? Um, it had like scraps of paper, like to make pictures or something. Shapes, right? All kinds of... <laughs> Swirls and stuff like that. Reform shapes. I, I was calling them amoeba shapes. Very good. And how about last month? Does anybody remember who we looked at last month? Links and Van Gogh. That's right. Do you remember anything about his style? Like the, um, the, uh, we made the night thing, like with the fork and stuff. Yeah, the starry night, right? That's his famous yeah. painting. And mm -hmm. he likes to kind of, he likes swirls and little dashes in his painting. Uh -huh. You must be a good student in school. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> very good, very good. Um, well, in a few minutes, we're going to talk about Claude Monet. Uh, I'm going to show you again some of his examples, and then we're going to do our version. Remember, when we come to these little lessons, there's a couple things I would love you to take away from. One, maybe you'll learn a, a thing or two, even though it's Friday afternoon, and I know you went to school all week. I went to school all week, too. I teach I teach high school kids, so I'm with the, the, the older kids all week long. Um, so I'm just trying to maybe introduce you to an artist you never heard of. So you might learn his name, his or her name. You might um, remember it and see their work somewhere. And then also a new style um, of art that you might wanna incorporate if you like to do like your own art project at home. You know, some of you are picking up your art supply bags. Some of the projects you might have some extra leftover. So you wanna do your own art and that's great. So a little bit of inspiration is what we call. All the projects we do, none of your final pieces need to look exactly like the artist or the example that I show you. It's always up for interpretation, okay? So it's, it's your chance to, to give it a try. One other thing before we get started today is that we have one more month of virtual. So in June, in June we're gonna do another virtual. Um, that is going to be on Keith Herring. He's a little bit of a different artist. He did almost like graffiti style. Graffiti is things like little cartoonish. Um, he would actually do it in public places and then he started doing them and they were so good where they just liked his um, ideas that they started becoming something that would be in art museums. So that's June's project. It's the last one that we're gonna do virtual because in July, we're going in person. Yay! So uh, in July and August, six weeks in a row, we're gonna do in person, okay? Details will follow, so just stay tuned but I wanted to give you a heads up on that because I'm pretty excited. It's, it's much, much easier and more fun, I think, to be able to, to do our art projects um, together and I could give you more advice if I could look over your shoulders. Uh, so um, come July, we'll be doing uh, the uh, summer series. And just to give you a little hint, it'll have something to do with the Olympics because the Olympics are happening too, right? Yay, everything's happening again. Okay. So let's take a look. Any questions so far as I babble, babble, babble? Okay, let's take a look at some of the examples. Okay, can you guys see my screen here? It says Claude Monet, somebody shake their head. Yes, okay, perfect, I saw your head shake. So the top pictures are all Claude Monet's water lilies. Do they look like water lilies? Yes? No, you don't think so? It's okay because they're not realistic, right? This is a style called impressionism, impressionism. If you look closely and I tell you what it is, do you get an impression that it, it kind of looks like a, a, a water lily? It might be a little blurry, it might be a little out of focus, but that was his style. He wanted to give the impression that that's what he was drawing, but he didn't feel like he needed to go super realistic. There's other artists, there's cameras that could capture pictures of water lilies that are realistic, but he wanted to paint them and put a little bit of his own style in it, okay? So what do you guys notice 
between the three top pictures. Those are all his water lilies, all different paintings. He would use paint. We're not gonna use paint today. We're gonna use tissue paper, but he would use paint. What do you notice about the three top paintings? Anybody want to comment on, on what looks similar or what looks different? No right or wrong, go ahead. Lil Ella, it just says Lillian. I don't know if that's you, Lillian, or you're... Um, I'm Lillian. Okay. Um, they all look like they could be the same body of water. They all have, there's water, yes. And what do you notice about the water? They look similar, but the same. Yes, there's different colors, right? One's more aqua, one's more purple, one's more blue. That is because he liked this subject matter so much. By the way, it's in Paris, which is in France. It's in an area called Giverny. And it's where these gardens were. I may not pronounce that as, as well as some people that are, are French, but that's my interpretation of it. Um, so he would spend many a days there painting. He liked to paint in the morning, in the afternoon, in the nighttime. He liked to paint when it was sunny, when it was cloudy, when it was drizzling out. So what do you think happens if you paint the same picture, but at a different time of day and different lighting? Any guesses? It can show the theme of like where, what the water looks like. Well, yeah, and it could change, right? It could change the co overall colors. Things are gonna move, things are gonna look different. You know, maybe it's something you could pay attention to. Do you have um, a tree or flowers in your front or back? Notice what it looks like in the morning, in the afternoon, in the nighttime, when it's sunny out, when it's cloudy out. I have, actually have these flowers where when it's cl uh, cloudy out, they close up. And when it's sunny out, they open up, okay? So this all has to do with light. So I just wanna point out that because it's gonna translate into our pictures when we create ours. So he found, even though you might think it's boring that he painted so many of the same water lilies, he thought it was so interesting because it was really a study on light and color. And all these pictures look slightly different. The position of the water lilies are different. The, the water lilies and water lilies actually have these little flowers that grow out of them. Sometime a year they were there, some they weren't. Um, you know, there were more grassy areas, more green areas sometimes of the year than others. Sometimes of the day, the flowers would be more bloom, some wouldn't. So it's just something to take a look at. So we're gonna create ours using different kinds of materials. So far with our projects, I had to use some paint. I try to expose you to different things, right? We used cut construction paper one week. Today, we're gonna work with tissue paper. So let me go behind the desk and we'll take a look. What's different? I mean, how would you describe tissue paper compared to construction paper? What's the difference between construction paper and tissue paper? Yep, Gloria, what do you think? Gloria, what do you think? Oh, I thought you were, I thought you knew. Anybody know? Go ahead, what's the difference, Ben? Oh, you gotta unmute your, say one more time, Ben. Tissue paper is more thin than paper that's the construction paper right so if you take your tissue paper and hold it up to the light it's almost a little see-through and i liked that for this project because you might want to overlap it and see the different shades of blue like we saw on monet's water lilies when you we use colored construction paper for um matisse's project we could overlap them but we weren't going to be able to see through them at all so just another there's just so many different materials and mediums that you could use for your art projects, okay? So let's go over what supplies you should have. Um, hopefully you picked up a supply bag and what's in your supply bag? Should be a couple strips of colored paper, blue colored paper, I should say. Uh, maybe at least five. Those are going to be our horizontal kind of strips of water. I purposely gave you different colors so you could play around with them, okay? Also some green squares. We're going to wind up cutting these and then some pink or purple little pieces that will wind up being the flowers, okay? You have your piece of cardstock. Cardstock is kind of like a little bit heavier paper, like poster board. Oops. Tissue paper is light and likes to fly away too. Um, little cup of glue, 
If you don't have glue, if you didn't pick up the bag, you need either Elmer's glue, which is like a white glue. You can always use a glue stick as well. In your bag, I included a few cotton swabs and a few cotton balls. I'm gonna use that mostly to help spread the glue. If you have a brush, so there was no brush in your bag, but if you have a brush and you'd rather use a brush, we'll be using it for the glue only. The only thing with using glue on the brush is when you're done, you have to clean it out really well. Uh, you have to run it under water, warm water and add a little soap to it to get it all out or else your brush will become stiff forever and it will no longer be, longer be good, okay? So if you have a brush, maybe if you have an older brush and you wanna use it with the glue, why don't you go grab that? And a pencil will be helpful, especially when we go to make the uh, lily pads. We're also gonna need scissors. So I'm just gonna wait one minute in case you need to get scissors, a pencil, and if you wanna get a brush, okay? So if anybody needs to run and get that, go ahead before we get started. All right, let's look at our blue strips. This is going to turn into our water, okay? Take a look at them. You have a couple different colors. They're all straight too. Some of them might even be a little jagged from how I, I kind of cut them in strips for you. I would love you to make a little wave or a little edge on them. So let me get a little closer to show you. And I don't think it's something you have to draw out. You can probably just do it. So if you take the edge, tissue paper is thin, like Ben mentioned. So if it, it doesn't have to be perfect, but if you can kind of create a little bit of a wave, and I'm gonna show you when I get all done with this one strip, but all I'm doing is kind of making a, an up and down. Okay, so see how I kind of made a little up and down motion there, as opposed to just this straight one. You know, you can use a little bit of the straight ones, but I think it would be nice if on one edge, you could create a little bit of a wave, a little bit, even if it's not, it's not an ocean that he was drawing. It didn't necessarily have waves, but it had ripples. Uh, different times of day, you know, if there's a little bit of rain on it, um, if the, uh, there's, you know, bugs or animals flying around, there would be some kind of form in the water. So let's work on that for the next few minutes. Pick up your glue strips, grab a pair of scissors, and create a little wave to one edge. Any questions? How are you guys doing? And if your tissue paper tears a little bit, it's okay. We're gonna, in a few minutes, put glue all underneath it. So even if there's a tear, it will glue down to the paper just fine. You might get little scraps, so you can put your scraps over to the side. You might even wind up with a really long one. This one was a long one. All of them should be about the length of your paper, but we can trim that down later if you feel like yours is too long. How many strips do most of you guys have? Five? Two? There were more than, there were only two in your bag? You might have to get creative with some other colors then.
Okay, I think we're probably just about ready to start gluing our water down. So hopefully you have a couple of them. You have different um, shapes and colors of shades. You might wanna pre-plan a little bit how you wanna lay them. We're gonna overlay them across the paper. I encourage you to overlap them a little bit so you get some interesting shades. This is where our glue is going to come in, handy. Either use a brush or the cotton ball will work just fine too. You want the cotton ball more than the Q-tip for this because you wanna paint a large area. So I would suggest painting the glue onto the paper. It's easier because this is thicker. If you try to glue it right on the tissue paper, it might tear a little bit on you and not kind of cooperate. So either dip your brush or your cotton ball onto your, into your glue and then right onto the surface of your paper. We're gonna use the glue a little bit at a time. So let's start with one section coat the entire section, like a whole strip. Decide what glue you wanna use first and then pat it down. Okay. Glue's just went on the paper. I laid the tissue paper and it adhered. It stuck really nicely for me. Okay, ready for my second row. Gonna dip back into that glue, whether you're using a brush or a cotton ball and do another strip of glue. It's okay if it overlaps. If you get a little glue on the edge of your first strip, that's okay. It's actually a good thing. It'll keep it sticking down. Now, if you want a little bit of the white of the paper to show, that's fine. If you wanna spread them out just a little bit, If you feel like you don't have enough, like a few of you said you um, don't have enough strips, you could space them out a little bit. Your paper might curl um, because of the, um, the glue and that's okay, it'll dry out, it'll flatten. You could always put it under a book when it's all dry. It's just because it's something wet that's going onto the paper. Okay, ready for my third strip. I think most of you have five strips. So we're going to just continue each section. Um, can we use, are these the shade of blue that we're supposed to use? Yes, that's the light blue. Okay. Yep, you got more? Okay, so maybe you were just thinking about the dark blue. Yes, I tried to give you some different shades. So some of them are even a little bit greenish. This one's like, I would say, maybe a really light green, an aqua color. And you could actually put, like if you find a little end that's sticking up, you could take the glue and put it on the top of the tissue paper because the tissue paper is so thin, it'll just kind of seep through and flatten it. Just be careful, I got a little tear there. So just be careful, but it's okay. Um, I also mentioned that you might have some pieces that go over the edge. You could either fold them over or when it's all dry, I wouldn't suggest cutting it with the wet glue on it, uh, but when it's all dry and, and uh, hardened, you could just easily trim these edges, okay? So now it's starting to really, I'm getting different shades. It's reminiscent, it's reminding me of Monet's water in his water lilies. Anybody getting sticky hands at home? A little bit, it's okay. Elmer's glue washes away really easily with some soap when we're all done. Sometimes it's just hard to work with the tissue paper when you have sticky hands.
Remember, don't be afraid to put a little glue on top of the tissue paper. You might even find when you do that, like it, it's, it's smudging some of the blue from the tissue paper, like the dye that's in the paper itself. And that's okay. We're just looking for a nice blue background for our water lilies here. Looks good, Callie. It looks like you're using paper mache. Anybody use paper mache before? That's for more like sculptures. So this is what we're trying to get. Something like this. So that one looks really long, Callie, that's okay. You can just cut the edge, maybe even turn it into two, might be long enough. Gloria, are you spreading your glue out? Do you have the cotton balls or a brush? Okay. So if you're squeezing right from the glue container, just make sure that you're spreading it out. Okay, you guys need a few more minutes to finish up your water. So while you guys are finishing up your water strips, let's talk about the next step. The next step is going to be the actual water lilies. And if you remember in the examples I showed you, they come in different shades. So again, you should have some green squares. So we're gonna have to cut those too. We, we're not gonna make our lily pads square. Does a lily pad remind you of any shape? It's a lily pad shape, but does it remind you of any other shape? I think Lillian, you're raising your hand, but <laughs> your, your crazy background. Yeah, sorry about that. I don't know why I'm thinking that. Um, yeah. So, can you tell me what the pancake looks like? Like, what are you? It kind of looks like, say again. Pancake, sorry. Could you hear her? No. I guess. Pancake? A pancake? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. It looks like a pancake? Yeah, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I think sometimes you're, you're too quick to, to mute it back off, so I got you. Um, yeah, well, sure, you could have a pancake that shape. But if anybody noticed, I'm actually going to flip back onto it one more time. Is that okay? Can I do that, Louis? Yeah. Okay. I want to just take a look while you guys keep working, keep working so you guys catch up to me. I just want to look at the water lilies again um, to see, I mean, his are, like I mentioned, impressionistic. So they kind of look like, um, I guess I would say they look like a pancake. Let's take a look at the, the student example on the bottom. What makes that shape look different than a pancake or different than a circle? Everyone's so hard at work. <laughs> When you guys have a minute, just look up on the screen. And what makes this shape down here different than a circle or a pancake shape? Yeah, go ahead, Gloria. Just yell it out. It has 
a quarter taken out of it. It has a little section, yeah. We could call it a, a, a pizza slice, a little V, a little... I actually, though, think it looks a little like a heart. Does anybody see a heart here? Like a, a, like a, a, a big, wide, kind of round heart. So it kind of comes down. And then like that. So if you know how to make the shape of a heart, I would make kind of a sloppy heart. Start in the center, open it up. I wouldn't make the bottom so pointy. I would just kind of round the bottom of your heart a little bit. And then the same on the other side. Look, no two lily pads are the same, just like a snowflake. So there's not gonna be a right or wrong lily pad, just like the colors. There's a couple different shades. Some are more yellowish, some are more green. Um, if you wanna draw a circle, because that's easier and then cut a little um, triangle out. You can do it that way as well. But take a look at the student example so we know what our next step is. So the strips are already there and now we're going to go in and draw our shapes on our green pieces, cut them out and then arrange them. Again, they can overlap. Look in this corner here, there's three that are overlapping. They can be spaced out and not touch. It's up to you. That open area, that little V, that little triangle, they could be facing any way you want them to. You could even have some that come off the page. You see these little slivers here? They're coming off the page as if they're floating in the pond um, that the water lilies were done. How are we doing? Okay, good, Callie, you're ready for the next step. How about the rest of you? Can anybody hold up their picture so I know we're ready to move on? Looks great, looks great. And there could be some white. Remember, we could fill up some of that white area with the um, lily pads. Okay, so I think well, we're gonna start moving on just cause we're past the halfway mark of class and I just wanna make sure everyone gets theirs done. So let's start with any shade of green. Try to draw that shape. I just said either a heart that's rounded or a circle with a square out of it. I'm gonna make this nice and close. So I just used a pencil and drew my shape. Now I'm gonna cut it out. You can make them different sizes. So I would suggest cutting a few out before you glue them so you can decide how you want to arrange them. How many water lilies are you guys going to put? At least three, maybe five. How many green pieces are in your bag? I'm gonna do about four. Four, that's great. And if you have a big piece and you wanna cut it in half and make two small ones, you can do that too. I think I'm gonna do, I think I have enough for five. How are we doing drawing them? Are they, are they looking like, I mean, look at Monet's water lilies. Whatever you draw that's green on there is gonna give the impression of a water lily. That's the whole point, just like his style. He didn't draw perfect water lilies, but he gave the idea, he suggested that that was a water lily. All right, I got one more. I actually didn't um, draw mine out. I just cut them and and uh, cut a triangle out of them. Okay, now let me see one finished one. Did you do a finished one? Yeah. That's a great idea, Callie. Thanks for sharing. 
So Callie felt like she didn't even need to draw out. She just made a circle and then cut out a triangle and it worked for her. So if you want to try her method, go ahead. If you're draw, if you drew on it and you have a little bit of the pencil line showing through, no one's gonna see that once it's layered on top of the blue, so don't worry about that. Okay, so you might still be a little bit tacky. Um, it dries pretty quickly, but there's still a little blue. It's, it's okay, we're gonna put this on top of it. It's like layer on top of layer on top of layer. But you might want to just play around with your positions. How do you want to arrange? Your arrangement of your artwork is called a composition. So Monet did many different compositions. Do you want them to be clustered? Maybe you like the idea of them all being clustered in the bottom corner, and we saw that on some of his. Maybe you like to spread them out evenly. It's all up to you, you're the artist. And that's why what I meant in the beginning of class when I said, no two of these will look alike when we're all done. So when you're ready, grab that glue, brush it onto a section, and then attach your water lily. So now the blue is actually going on top of your blue area, one little section at a time. Do we use the Q-tip or still the cotton balls? Do you have more cotton balls? No, mine, mine still are worn down like. Well, I gave you a couple there, but yeah, if you, if you want, you could use this. You just got to spread it out a little bit more. All right. And again, you could put a little glue on top of the lily pad if you feel like it's not sticking great. It will stick, trust me. And if you have some areas of white glue that is showing through, white glue will dry clear. Elmer's glue, if you have a different brand, Elmer's glue is what we call white glue, but it's really just a brand name. There's some other off brands. So whatever kind of white glue you're using, even the glue stick, you shouldn't be able to tell that you're working with it, okay? So here's my lily pads. They're a little see-through, which I love. You could see the water through it. I made my little opening in different directions. So there's a little bit of something interesting to look at. Jack, how's your lily pads coming out? Great. I love it. Ben, are you still working on your background, your water? Yeah. No. Are you working with the water lilies? Oh, okay, great. So that's, that's a great way to change the composition up. So Ben did his, what we call vertical. So mine is horizontal and his is vertical the other direction. So there's no right or wrong. I love that idea. So it might seem like he needs more strips because it's a longer piece of paper that way um, and cut them a little shorter. But that's a great, uh, that's a great way to handle your artwork. Oh, 
Oh, I like the different sizes of yours, Callie. Very nice. I like the big and the small, the in-between size. How's it looking, Gloria? Is anybody using a glue stick or is everybody using some kind of white glue? Raise your hand if you're using a glue stick. No, okay, good. I just wanted to know that for the next step. Because the next step for the little flowers, you really need the white glue. Um, or I was gonna give you a different option, a different way to handle the little flowers. So uh, while you guys are finishing up your lily pads, I am going to share the screen one more time when we look at our last step. Okay, so the flowers. Notice on Monet's um, paintings, some of them are floating in the water, some of them are on the actual water lily themselves. So in your example, you can put them right in the center, but you don't have to. You could put, you could put them off to the side, you could put them kind of floating. They actually kind of, um, the flowers grow from uh, in the water up. So some of them kind of poke through this area, this kind of V section. Some of them are just kind of in between the water lilies. So because we're all using white glue, we should be able to create this little bit of um, like a 3D type of flower. Okay, so what that means is on your, your little colored pieces of paper, you might have different shades of pink, maybe even some purple. We're going to make them into a little, little flower, almost like a little ball. We're just gonna kind of twist them up. If you don't like that, you could cut it into a little circle and just use that. And that's what I was gonna suggest if you were using um, a glue stick. So this time you wanna go a little heavier on the Elmer's glue. Use um, either your brush or this time your Q-tip. Get a good, good dab of it. Dab it onto your paper, enough that it stays white. And then you can kind of press your paper, your pink paper into it. And you're probably not gonna to wanna to lift that for a little while so that it dries, but let me just give you my close up. So all I did was kind of ball up that little piece of paper, twist it. I put a good dab of glue on there and then just pressed it in. So it's pretty cool, like it's dimensional now. It's 3D. Okay, give it a try. And I'll put the nice finishing touch, a little pop of color to finish up your project. Can you crumble the pieces of paper? Yeah, that's basically what I'm doing. There's no right or wrong. Like I'm kind of taking the center of it and twisting it, but you can crumble it more like a ball and just place it right in that center. Okay. Give it a nice good push though into the glue. And if, you, if your little scraps are too big, you can tear them down a little bit. And every lily pad doesn't need a flower. If you don't really want the flower, you don't have to. But I think that it adds a nice little finishing touch to them. So I use some different sizes and some of them are bigger than others. Some of them stick out more than others. I'm just trying to show you the, the, the profile, the side, so you can see how I have a little bit of dimension. Can you also um, use scraps of the um, white pieces of paper, like this color kind of? Certainly, okay. sure. All right. you're, the, you're the artist, Callie. Oh, 
Oh, are you done with yours? You're just showing me how it's going. Very good. Good, good, good. Lillian, how's it going over there? It's hard for me to see what, what you're working on. You still, you still with me? I think that was a thumbs up. Yeah. Can you hold up? Can you hold it up? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not done yet. Oh, another great artist interpretation. The uh, the water uh, strips are going in all different directions. I love that. I love it. So as you guys start to finish up. What's one of the last things an artist does to their work? Signs their name. Sign it. You got to think about when you become a rich and famous artist, who do you want to be known as? Do you want to sign your full name? Do you want to be just your first name? Do you want to be your initials? So decide how you would like to be known. Part of your signature, it's a lot to think about. And traditionally, work is signed in the bottom right corner. If that's dry on you yet, it should be if it's just the blue area. I would go ahead in that corner and sign your name. You have your pencil, you can use your pencil. If you um, have a Sharpie or a black marker, that's always good. But get in the habit of signing your work on the front because everyone should know who did it. So what do you guys think of Monet's work compared to if you were here for Matisse and for um, Van Gogh? How does his work compare? Do you like it? You... I really like um, uh, Van Gogh's because he has like tons and tons of swirls and stuff. Okay. Like that. That's still, he, Van Gogh's still your favorite so far? I'm not sure now since we did this one. I'm not sure. Okay. Did you like working with the tissue paper? Did you know that you can do this stuff just with regular tissue paper? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So like this is something that's easy to do. You can go to the dollar store and buy like tissue paper just like you might use for like presents, you know, tissue in um, that comes in bags. They sell a pack that's different colors. So you can just go buy that at the dollar store work with some glue and like you see what happens when you play with the glue and you put it on top and you layer. You can do almost something like Matisse's project with the tissue paper. So something you might want to experiment. Can I also show you mine? I would love to. I want to see everyone's before you go if you would be, wouldn't mind. Right here in the, in the corner, I did like three different pieces. Fantastic. For a special, for a special one. That's ready for a frame. Uh-huh. Did you sign it? Oh, I, I, I don't know if anybody's moms are behind them, but this might be a good Mother's Day present. Don't tell her. Okay. Don't tell her. Okay. But I'm, a mom. I'm a mom and I'm pretty sure your moms would like this as a Mother's Day present. That was a good idea, right, Jack? Did you buy her a present yet? Or make her a present yet? <laughs> he did. He did. All right. Okay. Um, maybe this is an extra add-on because I'm sure any mom would like it. All right, I saw um, Callie's, Gloria, are uh, you almost done? Can I check yours out before we go? Wow, I love yours. You did a lot of smaller ones. See, isn't this so great, Lillian, as I see yours? That's why when we're all in person um, in, a, in two months, it'll be great to kind of just look at what everybody else is doing. I saw yours, Ben, are you all done the way you showed me? Okay, and Jack, can I see yours? Love it. No flowers for you? No, no pink flowers for you? I can't hear you. You're muted. You know that. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, this is an example of Claude Monet's water lilies. Any questions before I let you go? All right. So I hope to see you next month. Um, the June project is Keith Herring. Uh, do we have the date on that one? That is... The seventh. 
Oh, you, <laughs> Shelly's great. The seventh, the fourth. The fourth. The fourth. Um, the seventh is a Monday, the fourth, first Friday, the fourth, June 4th, um, we'll be doing uh, Keith Herring. So a week or two before you can come pick up your goodie bag. I hope to see you then. I really hope you enjoyed today's project. Have a great weekend, guys. Bye. 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 Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. That's why I had to say bye. <laughs> bye, Jack. Bye.